And we will hand over to Francesco, who is going to lead the Blenzer Institute Q&A now. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. And take it away, Netherlands. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, can you guys hear us? Yes, we can. Awesome. Yeah, Francesco is not here. Uh, he's moving places right now. So uh, I have a special guest here. Hey! This is actually Anthony, whose laptop this is. <laughs> so we have a, a bit of a username problem here. My actual name is Anthony. That's my birth name. But my short name is Tom. Really? My, my computer name is Anthony. All right. Guys, I've never... that. I think you've just blown away the entire Blender world right there. <laughs> oh! Anyway, we have to say a special line. I have to say, welcome to Amsterdam, the Blender Institute, and the World Blender Meetup Day. Hello. I'm Tom. I am Andy. And this is Pablo. He just entered. The and room. Pablo is coming in a second. Yeah. Okay. Hey. And it's a beautiful day. We have sun. And you can't actually see that. But this is how it looks outside. It's a beautiful, sunny day. So. Uh we awesome. are well, going to do questions and answers. Um, I can do some Blender stuff, but the, the guys here are much more Blender than me. Uh, but there might be some technical questions about development, and I, I will uh, chime in. So I would suggest we go to Blender.today. That's where the list of uh, things to post. Yeah. called uh, Blender Meetup Day. And then uh, you can post your questions, and we will pick couple and start with yeah, it's just the things. So Thank David, you. you're okay with that? Absolutely. And actually uh, just to kind of kick things off, I had a small list of questions here to just kind of get the ball moving. Uh, if you want I can ask you a couple. Sure, yeah. So you have questions, okay. Let me try. Yeah, you know, just to start to start the process really. Uh, so well, are you the... going to be make make are you going to be awake for twenty four hours? Oh gosh, no. I'm handing yeah. this off. I'm handing this off in about uh, five hours, five six hours here to uh, LA when the, when they come up come on online. Yeah, I'll see you for the second half though, and okay. then I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> All right, I think uh, the so, some of the big questions on on everybody's mind. Um, first of all, two seven seven looking really great with some of these test builds. Uh, is that something that's going to be out before SIGGRAPH? Are, are we pretty close, or or where are we at with two seven seven? So what do you want before SIGGRAPH? Two seven seven is going to be out next week. Next week, awesome, awesome. awesome. It's already a splash going, and there's a release candidate. Mm -hmm. And that means that if there are not too many bugs, then we will make it an official release. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I'll oh, go so ahead. We, Sorry. We first had a test build last week, two test builds, and then we make a release candidate, and then there's the official release. And we try to get as many people trying the binaries to report as bugs. Otherwise, you have to make a release, and then you make a release A and a B and a C, and you keep fixing it. So we try to condense that period. And that period is now, so please go to blender.org, get yourself the last RC, the release candidate, and find bugs. Because after next week, we're not going to fix bugs anymore. We want to develop. Actually, that was my next question. Uh, at SIGGRAPH, you, you were a big proponent about stopping the, the kind of like we have to constantly release like a new thing and just taking some time to develop and work on the software. Um, how's that going? And, and do you feel like that was a, the right decision? So, uh, I, uh, I, so how, how I, what did you, you said at SIGGRAPH I announced that we wanted to do a 2.8 thing and a bigger leap forward, right? right. Are you wondering how is the development going for this? Yeah, like I, you, you mentioned rather than trying to release something brand new as often as possible to just kind of focus on 2.8. I, I remember that being the coding that you talked about. We, we try. The, the guys try, but if you look at the commit logs and at the reports, people write, still like 50 to 80 percent of the developer's time is going to the normal day-to-day -day development tasks. 
So the bug fixing, maintenance, patch reviews, uh, new developers coming in, uh, giving people a hand, trying to get stuff done in, uh, on Blender itself. So Blender is now so big that you have three people full time only on maintenance. This is all our development resources. The top developers are still only working on maintenance. That's a bit, it's good because it's a big program, it's awesome to keep it stable. But it's also not good because those people can also help bring in Blender forward. Uh, we hoped by not releasing it so often and by reducing the amount of new projects that we have time and have more time to develop. Uh, well, it's starting up, but it's still very small. I hope we can do this more after 2.77. Uh, but this still is waiting for a bigger picture. Awesome. Well, you know what? I'm checking the website, and it looks like you have a, a few questions. So I'll put the link here in the chat. Uh, but I was on laughing uh, about 2.8 for everyone. I was going to write a 2.8 update article on the blog, where I will make a little summary of what the Adobe Pulp is doing, and what kind of things do we know, and what are the open issues still. But things are moving forward, but it is still not clear enough. That's what I would like to communicate. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Sounds good. I'm tweeting about that so we get more. So uh, what are we going to do? Which is the first question you want us to answer? Looks like you have three on the website at the moment. Yeah, all right. So let's start with the first one. That goes. What is the plan for cycles displacement feature development and how do we think it will exit experimental <laughs> mode anytime soon? Experiment. Oh, because it's not default? Yeah. And what is the Well, this place, the, the, the render time displacement is only under experimental mode because yeah. I, I, I still think that there are some dicing issues or so. But uh, unfortunately, Sergey is not here, so we might not be able to answer it. Um, what I do know, I mean, Sergey is working for the Blender Institute. He's working on cycles for at least half his time. Which is uh, fairly important for cycles, which are um, thing why people are using Blender nowadays, it seems. Very important thing to keep well developed. But his goal is also to make sure that uh, the cycles engine is production ready. And uh, one of the main production bottlenecks in cycles is render time, render time, render time. It takes too long, right? So you have to bring it down to like a few, one or two hours for the final frame in production instead of 10 hours. And that's his main goal. So he's trying to optimize things like for BVAs, for ray tracing, uh, multiple BVAs, all kinds of nice tricks, multiple scattering, hair systems, that kind of things to make it fast. And after that, you can work, I think, on features like this placement and that kind of things. That's the big picture. But I don't know the detail. I don't know. Maybe the experimental feature is almost finished. Yeah, but it's been an experimental mode at least for well since cycles existed. I think Blast was never happy with how the displacement happened, but also added it then. It was Blast, yeah. yeah his, and, and then I think someone else worked on it for a while. I don't remember exactly, but um, yeah. But honestly, we don't really use displacement quite as often. So for us, no. the most important things are motion blur. Uh, uh, render transparency speed, uh, BDH building, like having really big complex scenes. And uh, yeah, the, those are the main bottlenecks right now. Yeah, motion so, blur is the main, main, main. Motion blur scattering. Yes. No. You know, scattering? But that's for here. Yeah. That's for, yeah, yeah, that's that, for making that's hair really fast. So we happen to make furry characters <laughs> uh, sometimes. <laughs> so, and, and those render really, really slowly right now. And uh, also the quality and the look of the hair uh, is probably not the best it could be right now. Um, so that's also something we're trying to improve. But at the same time, we're really uh, we're really naggy about these things. Like if we if if cycle is too slow for us, then we we immediately go to Sergey and bug him about it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, speed is currently one of the main main issues. Good. Yeah. Next. Do you think Blender needs an evangelist developer? Ha. 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 Uh, David, did you read the article about the evangelist developer potential? 
I, I, I must have missed it. Please, please inform. But I, I only read it diagonal. There was too many things going on. I thought it was an interesting idea. I didn't, I don't know all the detail, but the proposal is that we should have somebody who's more visible to the outside world, a technical person or a developer, to visit uh, conferences, but also to write online more about how development goes. The evangelist is typically what uh, companies put in place to go around everywhere and spread the word, right? And, but I haven't read it in detail, so I don't know uh, yet how to answer the question. And the point is, the guy who uh, posted the question is also the guy who posted the article about the evangelist. So, so I'm sorry, I still have to read it, and I will reply to it. I don't know the details. So, you know yeah, actually, I have a kind of a follow-up question to that. Um, you know, Blender being one of the largest open source projects that uh, I know of in the world, uh, I'm well, sure you constantly you're tiny, man. You're tiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, nonetheless, I mean, you you got a big group of people here, and my my thought was like, you're constantly getting feedback and suggestions and and tons of people throwing like energy into this how do you kind of sort all of all of that like th is there kind of a process when people are constantly giving you feedback and suggestions or uh, how, do you, how do you kind of deal with all of that but i'm not dealing with that personally what i'm not like santa claus who gets all the letters and then reads it and then gets all the kids the presents i mean some people might think so but uh, that's not how it works development community that is uh, more than a hundred people who commit or who, uh, who uh, act to Blender, who work on Blender, and they work on the code and they do this because they like it or because people gave them an idea or suggestion to work on things or a studio. So this is the dynamics of open source. It's an open project, everybody can participate. Now, if people want something to be done, then the best trick is to convince developers. And that's the dynamics. So, Blender artists plays a role, eh? people start talking about things and they're all very enthusiastic about one specific feature or uh, uh, what the developer did. Then those things bubble up and they get into the attention and it might end up in the next release. So that's the normal chaotic, a bit anarchistic, but it's the normal option. We, we tried in the very early beginning to have a feature request tracker. Yeah, but people still want, ah, can I post a feature request? But I have a great idea for Blender. I said, well, if you would, everybody, all the million people who download Blender every two months, if they would start posting ideas, you get only noise. It's impossible to, to, to keep track of all of this. So it's better to start writing on your own blog or on Facebook or on Twitter or on like, the artists or the forums. Write your ideas, get into conversation with other people, Find out maybe it's already there because many ideas are already developed. Sometimes it's a great idea. People say, well, this is actually already on the to do for five years, but there is no developer who can pick it up. But that's usually uh, the, bigger, but the biggest bottleneck is developers. And some people think that developers do magic. Huh? They uh, give them an idea huh? and then they type it. But it's not, not like that. Developers have more than enough ideas themselves, and they don't have the time to code everything. That's the, the problem. So we need more developers. We don't need more ideas. We need more people who can make ideas happen. That's a that's a good way yeah. to go. With having having more people, uh, having more people develop it would be uh, absolutely. Yeah. And especially people like who work with studios, like the two guys. I saw that there is a user and developer interaction is essential. And it's nice to do that locally. You sit next to an artist and you see, shit, what's that guy doing? And then you fix it, right? That's how uh, Blender can become a better tool. That's why it works so well to have the Blender studio, the institute, the work of the movies. Because you see really day by day by day the artist struggling fighting, cursing, cursing, <laughs> bashing their heads to the top. We're happy. And having lots of fun. We're happy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's the daily practice that is really interesting. Yes. And I would like to see developers working in studios to uh, come.
Because if you know, at, at the moment, if you look back, the blender is now so big that if you want to improve blender, it gets exponentially more complicated. And for example, I, I added the first particle system in the 90s. I think I spent maybe a day or two days on it. Ah, particles, right? The second particle system added. 2006 for the Japan, seven, and Janne spent a couple of months on it. Yeah, and then we had a great particle system, but that's also failing in cases. When we tried for the Cosmos Laundry Mat, we have a new particle system. And we had a developer here working on particles and hair for almost for more than a year, and we still couldn't finish it. So suddenly it becomes uh, a job that would take like two developers two years to do. And that's, that's the exponential growth which we usually see in software companies in general. Uh, Facebook was probably coded by one guy in the evening, and then the second version took a team for 10 people, and now Facebook has what? 10,000 people developing a website? What are they doing, right? But that's how it works with software. And that's the, the reality. So if you want to have a better particle system, where do you find developers who can work on that for like two years? That's our challenge. That's a yeah. great answer. That's a, that's a really good answer. I, I know you're constantly getting suggestions and everything. And the whole, I think it, what it shows is the passion of the community. Everyone's really passionate about this amazing piece of software. Uh, it looks like we have another question uh, from Qualism on the uh, Blender dot today. Do you want to take that one? Oh yeah. So uh, you mentioned doing commentary tracks on one of the BI podcasts, but said it's difficult because a short film goes by so quickly. Um, so if we if Could it makes slow sense down. to have a slowdown, so. Um, yeah, we, it actually makes sense. Uh, we, we experimented with it once during Big Bug Bunny, where we actually played the film, and then we paused the movie and, and to talk about certain aspects. The problem is that if, yeah, it, it really works if you're like three people or, or two people. But if you're like a team of five people, then it gets really <laughs> messy. But uh, yeah, definitely, that would be, that, that's a great idea, actually. Slow it down or pause it. Uh, have a screencast of the movie playing back, and then uh, just discuss it. That's a good way to make a that movie sure. at least half an hour long, by the way. That was an idea. When we did the uh, 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 storyboarding for Family Wars 3, we had help from Colin, Colin who was working at Pixar that time, and he was using an annotation tool. Yeah. Uh, so he was, you could play back video, and then draw lines and arrows and things to back, look at back, play it again, remove the text and move to the next part. Yeah. And that kind of annotation in a video was so useful. So that's we have to make sure that Blender Sequence has a player. Yeah. You can play a video, quickly add a note and, and an arrow stop, talk about it. You have your own little video on the corner. Yeah. That's how you explain what the video is doing. Yeah. That's actually I, how Shanti did it for his animation video. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's much nicer than having a commentary track. This yeah. is always a bit awkward because what do you what is it, right? Yeah, you want to see people's faces too. So Yeah. Yeah. And that's you want them to actually say something about the video. And in, in, in the video, even when you play 25%, it goes by, right? And then yeah. you, have to, you want to scrub back and you want to see it in a loop for a minute and say, look, look, that, that, that. Yeah, yeah in, the, in the cloud also somebody asked about, about uh, doing this for animation. But, but uh, in Caminante 3, it's so recent that the changes in animation are not uh, like it's for now, you know when something is is recent, it's still good enough. So we thought of doing it with Grand Dilemma, getting uh, the previous episode of Caminandes and talk about it and and critique ourselves because that one is 100% uh, healthy basically. Plus, I think one shot by Francesco and one shot by me, and the rest is all healthy. So. Yeah, so we can watch it, stop, and then what we would change. For example, the, the pacing in Caminandes 2 is super slow at the beginning. And, and like halfway is about the same camera and everything, and those critiques are nice to, to give. 
So we're gonna do that soon, next week maybe, or we'll see. Mark. There's a, yeah, there's a, a question that was posted in the chat, but I reposted it in Blender.today, but why, why don't you take it? All right. Is that, uh, ah, there is actually two, if you but, refresh. You'll just have to refresh. We got somebody else. Oh, but no. That's the game manager. Only four commands. Yeah. Uh, so the roadmap to the game manager. Uh, the game manager discussion, you can find a lot of good information on the code blog, code doc. And there are a couple of posts uh, with ideas and suggestions how to move forward. There's even a conversation going on between the core game developers. Uh, this will result in a new blog post as well. Uh, I think there is a quite well uh, developed consensus on idea how to move forward. Not everything is clear. But what is clear, for example, is that we have to make the game engine more tightly use parts of Blender so that we can combine forces. For example, the viewport is very clear. The viewport in Blender should support uh, physically based rendering techniques. Uh, everything could look real time and awesome. It's the modelers and designers and animators, and the same technique can be used for the game engine player. Another thing is animation system and physics. On the heavy development, we want to make sure that physics and physics based can be better, no based can be great. So that's also something that game engine could use. And we want to have a node based logic system. Node, or sorry, logic editing and learning should become much more uh, accessible and more advanced. So that's also a design process that has to start yet. Okay. Um, there's one from the chat that uh, I just want to make sure it doesn't get lost. Is a material library presetting plant and other kinds of libraries, textures, physics, etc.? Uh, like preset for materials. Yeah, and you remember uh, Sergey saying that one of the reasons why his high no. wasn't uh, uh, default yet was because of the experimental and because of. Beautiful models, with textures, uh, air uh, systems, yeah. and uh, physics, and water. Um, uh, yeah, but also assets from the cloud. We were thinking about having that because all CC BY. Yeah, because currently every time someone has to, someone is making a preset, they have to write themselves. Yeah, like for uh, I don't know for the asset management add-on, for example. So it would be nice to have a unified interface for that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Thomas Dinglish uh, proposes to make cycles default in Blender. Uh, he can do that. There's some technical issues still to solve for add-ons or for exporters. But if we do that, we can also then make sure that there's a number of presets bundled inside of Blender. We can say, OK, add uh, a material. And then you immediately get a drop down with nice beautiful images of 10 or 20 very nice, well developed appreciators that you can immediately apply on a model. Yeah. It's essential. Of course, that's important. But for that's the same thing. We help with that. And people have those kind of uh, libraries. They can share it or can help you find uh, interfaces for it. Uh, Blender Guru is experimenting with this in a very nice way. If he has presets for light or presets for material. Those kind of things we can uh, include in the release too. But maybe we could better do that in 2.8 as part of a bigger workflow uh, for the creation of the interface. Yeah. Ties into asset management as well. So. Yeah. All right. There is, uh, oh yeah, so the one that you posted on Blender, reposted on Blender.today, uh, which is, do we have an ETA on spherical stereo cycles rendering as part of an official release yet? Well, David had that question. Hi, David. <laughs> <laughs> yes, next release. Already. Already. Wow. Wow, oh there's God. a number. Ah! <laughs> News. Did you hear that well? Did you hear that? I said, two point seven eight. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually Paul's question. Yeah, it was it was Paul's reposting it in in here yeah. for him. Because he's doing a lot of uh, spherical uh, stereo rendering stuff for uh, the for the Bastian set. Uh, he's making lots of lots of panoramas and stuff. It's great to see people working. Uh, uh, Shenka is looking at the the path from the line mm -hmm. to put it in the cycles engine. Uh, Shenka is of course for. Uh, 
uh, high level, and you say this piece of shit code and stuff, so you will improve it and make it And we are going to do a test here in the studio as well, with a, a bit of coming on this and render a couple of frames in uh, VR for cardboard and for uh, 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 Oculus. And there's also a pathway thing to do Oculus previewing in the interface. And together with Dalai, we wanted to make sure that this is ready for the next release. I hope in two months it will be all finished. Not with too much work. Can I ask a follow up to the, the kind of like the VR kind of thing? Like, has the introduction of like Oculus and Magic Leap and HoloLens, has that kind of like altered the path that you want to take with Blender at all? Like real time rendering and everything? Is that like change the way you do stuff? I, I know that's kind of a very broad question, but I'm just kind of curious about that. I don't think it changes a lot. I mean, you still need a tool and you need model animation and real time systems. Whether you do real time for VR or real time for the game or real time for modeling, there's lots of similar technology. The only difference is that we need to make sure that you can export efficiently. It has to do with uh, some rendering and some export formats, field maps or dynamic uh, 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 maps or that kind of thing. It's just a matter of formatting and file support and previewing, and that's it. Well, it's not going to change Blender completely. Cool. I think Blender was already ready for the next millennium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next decade. Yeah. Well, 2020. Ooh. Ooh. Well, imagine. There's, there's a new question on Blender.today uh, that was just posted if you refresh it here. Yeah. By Zuga Master? Yeah. It's yeah. about the, the modeling sprints that we did for Sintel. Ah. If we're going to do oh. something like that. After, oh, that's a fun one. Hey, Real really quick, good. too, David Barron, I see you just came in. Can you uh, mute oh, yeah. your audio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah, just in case we don't get any feedback, it'd be great. So, Thank you. should we read it aloud so yeah. we know yeah. what? Go for it. So, do you think with the gigantic community these days, uh, is it possible to feature user generated content into the open movies? Um, we did it for Sintel back in the days, like the, the modeling sprints where we needed to fill in the market with uh, models of well, humans and also um, assets of all kinds. And we couldn't make it with, it with our team, so we asked the community. And we had uh, ideas for, for, what was it, for Cosmos? For Cosmos it was as well. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. The, uh, the problem is, well, of course, aside from how do you get people to interact and to, to collaborate on something, I mean that's uh, that's part of the of the roadmap on of the cloud as well to have yeah. people have their own projects but also collaborate on projects within the cloud and then uh, have all sorts of tools within Blender and the Blender cloud to make sure that that runs smoothly. But also it's a uh, it's it's also a problem of having everything consistent because then you need to make sure that people use the right naming for things that the meshes are not. A horrible mess or something like that. That everything is made within the guidelines because it's easy to do things within the studio where five people are sitting together on a table, um, but it's really more difficult to do that online. I mean, we're already collaborating online with uh, you know our rigging department <laughs> in, yeah. Yeah, in Argentina and, and storyboards and uh... I think the market scene is a good example because the market. By design, you needed to have all kinds of different assets. Yeah. It had to be a little bit chaotic and had a big variation. Mm -hmm. it, to fit into the but same you, universe, if you so. would look at uh, the Shaman cabin, it was based on a design from David, concept art, and it had a very distinct design in that cabin. That, that modeling that is yeah, that's something you do internally based on the concept art of an artist. And it's very difficult to say to the internet, hey guys, start modeling this concept art. It's so also, interesting. It's also sometimes really hard to give feedback on something. I mean, verbally it works, and so nowadays the technology is uh, quite advanced. Look at us right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really easy. Uh, it's a lot easier to talk about things and uh, and interact in that way. 
but uh, often, yeah, you you also like. It it's, takes time to review time, the stuff, yeah. to, to review the everything and, and just to keep feedback. So sometimes you need to put your hands on the model and then you're, yeah, then it's not a, their model anymore and then you don't want to break anybody's feelings. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely something we're working on and uh, we want to support and Next. Okay. Class simulation. <laughs> yeah. Will class simulation be possible to Break or calculate on GPU. Yeah. I have no idea. No idea. Who's working on on cloth sim? Nobody. Whoever worked on cloth sim. Well, there is a cloth in bullet, and I'm uh, in regular contact with the bullet developer. And he's uh, an open CL and the CPU on it. But he also says, well, but cloth and bullet is more like a, a soft body level cloth. It's not the cloth people would expect in a high quality production. And what we need is cloth like this. Huh? this is cloth. And then it's really subtle and little, and very advanced. But what doing this is uh, not something you can do on a CPU or not, but a matter. We need a much higher level simulation system than we to be able to handle it. Yeah. And that's difficult. Uh, if you look at film credits and Pixar movies and Dreamworks, and you suddenly see a cloth department, right? As a notice, and we see like 20 people or so handling the cloth for them. It's extremely difficult. Uh, we welcome Google Summer of Code students, all the brilliant seniors that start working on that. Make sure that there's an open source cloth library that works for characters. And not only for curtains, for waving flags and curtains, that's fine, you have that. You can do that easily. With cloth, like in people. Yeah, cloth that is sticky, that's interacting with itself, that's wrinkling up in a realistic way, and that's actually right. not, yeah, another simulation. Yeah. All right. Hey, yeah. there's two more. Yeah, there is uh, Ma material notes. Material th notes that works in cycles and Blender internal, but presently only in one of them. For example, the Fresnel node. Why not put them in the two list? What is? What does it mean? Okay. Well, um, one of the weird things in Blender, and it actually works, is that when we add a cycles, is that Rack decided to make material nodes work in both. So you have materials for Blender internal and you have material nodes for Jackal. And you can combine them. No. No, yes and no, in the one editor. But actually, they, they are separate enter. nodes. Yeah. So the only trick you can do is that if you switch from internal to Jackal or from Jackal to internal, that you can still have something working. But then you see different nodes or different nodes are working. Yeah. So technically, it's the same nodes, but they don't work. So the cycles nodes are not working in internal, and internal nodes are not working in cycles. But you can edit them in the same node tree. Yeah. So, yeah. so having a node in cycles means that you also have to code the same thing in internal again. And because both render systems are so entirely different, that's what we want. Yeah, that's really. And at some moment, we are going to cut Blender internal. Uh, what? Throw it into the canal. Put it in OpenGL, uh, the viewport. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's an idea. Yeah. I, but David, you guys use uh, cycles or internal? For your we, use, uh, we use cycles completely. Uh, that's Cycles yeah. has a lot of similarities to, to V-Ray, which we also use, and we, we just find Cycles to be the best. Uh, we played with internal quite a bit on the early Ray and Clovis shorts while we were trying to figure things out, but you know what? You can't you can't beat GPU rendering. I mean, that's, that's, that's just like, that's a deal breaker right there. It's so good, it's so fast, and you can you, you can play with some big boys using just very simple you know inexpensive game cards so um in fact we are we're working on a very very big project we can't we're under nda right now uh, we're collaborating with another studio out of la and the previous studio used v-ray and we are now using cycles for the entire it's a television show we're going to use cycles for the entire thing 
and uh, we're really going to push cycles to its limit. You know, we 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 want to get to the point where like, wow, that is television quality, high quality VFX. So uh, yeah, we we love cycles. What's that? What's your render times currently? Uh, it really depends on rain, Clovis stuff. Anywhere between five to twenty minutes. We really, we really, really, we break stuff up in the layers, though, so that might be why. Um, for the yeah, pretty pretty fast, really. Um, for the uh, what's that? So no fur. Yeah, 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 yeah. No fur. That's that's kind of that we tried. Trust me, that's why we decided not to. For this television project, um, we're exploring cloud rendering because we know those render times are easily going to hit an hour or two plus frame. And that's that's what the job demands, and that's what the budget demands. So that's fine. Um, but we uh, we're a little worried about those render times. So this this could be killer. Uh, for everyone now who is worried about Blender internal, of course we're not going to remove it without having an alternative which would work as good or even better. And the fun thing is, if you look at how real-time graphics is evolving, the for Falcon, for example, and Falcon is the, uh, the new OpenCL system, Falcon design actually looks like how Blender Internal was designed. The Falcon is based on render layers and passes. Everything is rendered in separate parts, like in Blender Internal, you have halos and hair, solid and transparent. They all rendered in layers and internally they are assembled. Yeah. It's the design of Vulcan. Nice. So Vulcan is perfect to, to make a really fast, real time, high quality render engine with. Yeah. That's what we should do. We should use OpenCL and CPU and Vulcan to make a viewport that renders better than render internal. Uh, and then cycles, of course, will render it better. But yeah. actually, have all. And then you can have near real time or real time super high quality render. And then it becomes interesting again for content makers to use. I, I actually had a little bit of a question uh, on on you. You mentioned OpenCL, and I know I know the Apple and Macs in general are kind of always a hot topic because of the drivers are seem to always be a little older than usual. Uh, I was really, it was really awesome to see OpenCL come out and then be supported and everything. But have have you guys looked at that with like supporting AMD cards? Is, is there any kind of news on that front, or how how does that fit into the whole two point eight, you know, roadmap? No, it's not. It's not related to two point eight. For AMD, uh, Santosh a Fury card, you know, the Fury F U R Y. Yep. But it's the latest uh, chipset of AMD cards with OpenCL, and they perform really good. Good stuff is uh, like the top CTX uh, card. So Sergey is working on uh, an express sheet. He had it sent it to me yesterday. But today or tomorrow, we will post a new official benchmark for cycles with four or five different uh, test files and the test here in the studio on AMD in OpenCL and on ZTX on uh, Linux and on Mac to compare uh, the performance of cycles on the various systems. So yes, OpenCL is getting there, but the, uh, there's still a lot of work to be done to bring it up to the same level as we have on QDAR and on uh, Intel. Are you using AMD cards or is it? Uh, yeah, I, I have I have one of the uh, what's nicely known as the trash can Max. Uh, ah, so, you got the trash can. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, for everything else, it performs really, really well. I'm, I'm honestly really happy with it. But the uh, the Fire Pro cards, though, I know they're a little older now, and that's why I, I, they're bitched and for everything. But I know with Blender, it wasn't. Up until recently, I think there's a thing with subsurface scattering too that wasn't supported just yet. Yeah, but it's getting very close to the SAM support level of QDA. So QDA also doesn't support subsurface scattering and CPU. And you still will have to accept that the graphics cards are still better than and testing but now uh, uh, SSS is on GPU, but oh, wait. Oh, yeah, cool. and this, uh, that's kind of slow, though. All right, we worked on it. It's yeah. in two seconds. Yeah. Ah. yeah. 
I thought it opened. Yeah. Them. I'm not sure if it. Uh, I don't, didn't test. Maybe it does. Far out today. Yeah. Well, I, I for for posterity, I posted the question about you know A and D support in Blend today. But there's a new question in there about from Harvester. Yeah, do you guys see that? Uh, yeah. With yeah, regards to PBR. Ah, yeah. Everything is PBR these days. Yeah. Yeah. Collaboration with algorithmic. So stands tools to tell us something to tell us something about possible future collaboration. Thank you. Algorithmic, well, you know? That the, well, one one thing. I mean, the goal of the Data Foundation and then about org developers is to make a free, one hundred percent open source pipeline. Period. And that's the first goal. So anything uh, algorithmic does, and I think that's uh, UV unwrapping, that's mostly, painting, painting, painting. Yeah. Painting and UV uh, wrapping is something we should do in Blender too. And I think Blender's UV tools and Blender's 3D painting, right? Yeah. That's cool. Right there, yeah. That is very good. So we keep working on that. That's, that's the first thing, it's most important. But secondly, of course, there, there are specialized tools who do a better job than Blender on things. Of course. Jet brush is awesome for, for sculpting, uh, algorithmic. I mean, I, I, the guys have, uh, I've talked to the guys that they have like 30 developers only working on this specific feature. Of course they are awesome. And they are open in trying to find a way to collaborate. And I've uh, okay, I told them how to do this, how to make sure that it's all CGL compliant, they don't uh, conflict with the open source license, but it will be their business. I mean, you cannot expect us to start Coding to make sure that we support their uh, commercial software. The commercial software has to make sure that they support Blender. Right? But well, they make the money, not us. So that's just a <laughs> yeah. fair business. So, yeah. And they, so if you have uh, a question about uh, algorithmic and Blender support, you could better go to them and tell them, hey guys, I would like to have the support. And then they will put more efforts on coding. Yeah, it's the same with the with the vector blur uh, question that we had some time ago in the Blender podcast. That Blender should support uh, others vector blur and no, it should External be the other. vector blur. Yeah, who calls like, vector blur? The, like you, for example, they have vector blur and stuff. And you, you. yeah, Foundry. So um, now but, we have to code better vector blur. Yeah, we have to code better vector blur anyway because it's yeah. Wow. It's all yeah. nice, yeah. More code yeah. is needed. Yeah. So Factor Blur is a very nice uh, tool uh, project to pick up for you. So yeah. Nice local, so you don't have an usability crap or users uh, fighting over little details. It's a great system to say, well, you have images with factors. Yeah. And you have is, there's, there's a question of uh, Hey, uh, David McDermott, David McDermott, can you mute yourself on your side? I, uh, I don't have. Really wants to come Hey, David McDermott, can you hear us? I don't think you can hear. <clears throat> oh, sorry about Actually, that. Actually, Rob, as we go on the live stream. Hey, David McDermott. Oh, they can't hear us. David McDermott <laughs> represents the Dublin group. There we go. Here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> sorry about that, Tom. Go ahead. We have to put Sergey in a cave like that as well. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Lighting from, lit from below, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Very awesome. Anyway, so I was uh, 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 PBR. 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 Everything is PBR nowadays. Yeah. yeah. PBR. All the vector blur. Yeah, vector blur. <laughs> the vector blur. Uh, let's keep the vector blur a lot of it, but it could be possible. Yeah. And uh, uh, algorithmic. Yeah. Is there a, a little follow up to like vector blur and everything like that? Is there a kind of like a a a thing that you really wish you could do in, in rendering. Uh, I know that I know there was a little bit of talk. I, I don't follow the developer chat too much, but I think there's a little bit of talk about the uh, the thing that RenderMan does, where it, like the noises. Ah, the, 
is is that like are things like that interesting or things like that maybe going to come or yeah totally yes. like we uh i think when things were published their paper on uh denoising i i posted the link to 30 mm -hmm. times or so. studying every line in the paper <laughs> you try to read between the lines <laughs> for the photo book so i can find classes yeah. Uh, yeah, but you uh, have a rough understanding how it works. But you don't know how to do it. Yeah. No, but, but he has some uh, working. Uh, yeah, Sergey has like I tested one of his denoising uh, setups. Ah. Yeah, already for Cosmos, but the problem was that it wasn't perfect yet. And of course, the thing that Pixar does is also uh, analyzes motion between frames and stuff like that. So of course, that's really interesting for us because hey, we want to have fast rendering. So, but, but the setup was basically a bunch of nodes yeah, that could be combined into one. He made uh, uh, as well. And he, uh, the problem is that, well, not the problem, but he tried to solve it in a different way than Pixar did. So, so Sergey has his own <laughs> super ideas about uh, uh, signal noise. Uh, mm -hmm. There is one, uh, one of the young new promising language developers called Lukash, not uh, Lukash. Dockner, I think. Yeah, uh, he's also working on denoising, and he showed already earlier the results of his work. Uh, he's working on it, but it's all in progress. And, um, when you say like 2.77, like after 2.77 comes out, are you going to take like a break and just put everybody on 2.8, or is, is that kind of? We wanted that last year, <laughs> right? Great doesn't work yet, right? You keep releasing. Just stop releasing. Yeah, stop releasing. Stop. The best thing would be if you could stop the bug tracker. How about that? <laughs> Can we close the bug tracker for six months? Or yes. Just, or just uh, nobody goes there. Like people will keep posting bugs, they pile up, <laughs> and then in five months you go back. So anyone who ever posted a bug, I mean, of course, thank you. But if you know how many bugs get posted and closed every day, it's insane. This is good. And the total amount of open bugs is always between 100 and 150. It's nothing. It's like 1% of the what's getting submitted per year is open. So that's really, really good. And I like that high quality support level for them there. So if you want to drop that, then you can do 2.8. But where do you put the balance? Right? Yeah. So that's what I said. So we have to study this further and getting more designs in place so that we really know exactly because of this is 2.8 viewport, this is 2.8 physics animation, this is both systems in 2.8 where Lucas Turner is working on. Tuna. This is, uh, uh, UI. Uh, UI stuff, workflow, configuration, then the 101. This is logic editing and the new game engine. So all those things have to be designed first. Then you can start to code. Or if you have a good plan, then we can go to Kickstarter or so and say to the world, guys, give us two million, all right? Then we are going to make it. And then we can hire like five to ten developers on it to work on it. Instead of trying to do this with fallen creation, it takes more time. Yeah. Oh, but okay. also, the, the people have to go to the development fund, maybe. And yeah. Development yeah. fund, uh, everybody subscribe to the development fund. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's still a tiny little bit sad. I'm a very sad, I'm a happy person, but it's a bit sad to know that, for example, the Cinema 4D users support their software with. 10 million per year. 10 million. And the development fund is 100,000 per year. Huh? And Cinema 4D uh, has, uh, they sell 2,000, 3,000 licenses per year. But they cost 4,000 each, right? So that's how they add up to the. Then you have to then use it. You've got three stuff. It's great. But if they would support us a little bit more, that we would have like one or two million per year coming into the development fund, it would lift up the quality of the software so tremendously. But I don't know how to make that happen. I think we have to find more professional users on board, get more uh, studios to invest development time in the That's, I think, the way forward. 
you guys in uh, theory, you can hire a developer. I what? actually, uh, you, you know, you, you you bring up a topic, and I'm I'm locked by NDAs, but we we are actively between us and, and LA, a studio out there looking for one because we we need to simulate some ten thousand people <laughs> doing crowd sims of characters is really hard, and you know the there's some there's some things where I talked to Francesco, there's some things that we can do already in Blender, and it's how do we like can we combine that with this like instancing system with this like rig system that we have so there's you know finding a way to combine all of that is uh is something that we're really uh looking into y you know you mentioned like a, a how do you get people to sign up look there's there's a whole bunch of people watching us live right now so i'm just going to point out the cloud.blender.org uh, and, and encourage people to sign fun too yeah, oh, yeah, the cloud or the development fund. Can you post a link to the development fund in here in the uh, in the chat? Yeah, that'd be great. You know, and then it's it's a great service. Uh, we're members of it, and it's you know getting all the files and everything, and of course supporting uh, a great piece of software is is awesome. So I, yeah, I don't know how the hell you guys do it, <laughs> but you you guys do some amazing work. How do we do it? Yeah. yeah how, how do, do, we, uh, how do you do it? Fine. 500 emails per day. That's how he does it. Yeah. Connecting, connecting, having fun. Yeah. There's so many great people on board. So that makes things tick. And the other thing is, we, we, we don't have a marketing department, we don't have sales. And that makes it quite relaxed. So people say, ah, 2.8, why don't we have 2.8 this year? But I don't know, right? But it's also, we don't have to. We can also keep adding new 8, new 9, new 9D, new 7, whatever. Uh, or we, we do a 2.8 with a smaller specification. So we can always simply do what is possible. We don't have to overpromise too much. But I do like to get focused and tell people, come on, let's make a big leap. But we can also make small leaps at a time. So whatever works, we will try. That's yeah. great. The, yeah. I, I think uh, I think a question on everybody's mind is: Will there be another Caminandes? Ah, Caminandes. Will there be another one? So I don't know. Will there well, be another one? Uh, the, of course. The thing is, when? Mm. Yeah. When we we had um, we had people asking about it, but uh, some people like open movies. Some people prefer just to focus on development. So we need to we need to find the balance in that. There's already a great script concept for episode four. Yes. The one with the Kanashi and it's yeah, 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 with the cat with the big cat. Yeah, with the predators. Yeah, with the predators. You know uh, with the Zootopia, you know, prey and predators. Ah, the predator. But that is a wonderful, you made a great design of, uh, what is it? A, Puma, uh, Puma. Lion, yeah, mountain that lion. It's an old lion. mountain lion with hair falling out. Um, but he still likes to hunt llamas, right? Yep. And he continuously fails. I fail so uh, bad, poor guy. Yeah. So, uh, well, we have to write a story still, but it's a great character to add in. Uh, but maybe Otti comes back. Wonder. Maybe, or the Armadillo comes back. The Armadillos have to come back. It's a whole universe that we want to keep uh, improving and adding more characters to it. And even without the llama, like this, the llama doesn't need to be on all of them. Of course, it has to. But it would be it interesting be. to ah. make a, a, a whole episode with the same universe, but ah. with all the characters. It could be ah. fun. Um, there are so many, so many things to do, but would it be possible anytime soon, like within this year? Next year? This year? This year? Uh, this year? This wow. year? After the show? here first, everybody. This year, a new Kamenandis confirmed. Yeah. Before, for Christmas release, there you go. Oh, another Christmas. <laughs> ah, finally, Christmas that time. Yeah. Yeah. This one has a uh, snow and. Uh, uh, it's, we found out that snow makes everything easier because any intersection just puts snow on it. It just takes longer to render, but it helps and it looks good. So, so yeah, would we make it? I don't know. After Seagraph, before? Ah. Never know. Uh, we will announce it when we know it ourselves. We don't know. Yeah. We are looking at the planning for this year. We have to do a couple of projects just to, to keep uh, the bills paid. Ah, we can't 
have a whole studio running only with the cloud, so we have to do some side projects. I'm still trying to get funding in for a big movie, which is not there yet, so until then we don't talk about it. I'm going to uh, roll in and then we can make an acquisition. Yeah. And that's the plan for this year, getting more money and uh, having lots of fun in the cloud with tutorials and small projects. Maybe a coming on this fall. Oh, Something else. Another short film. That's funny. And you guys are hosting a SIGGRAPH session this year, right? Yeah. SIGGRAPH booth? So you, you were going to do that. I was actually going to ask you. I, we, we haven't uh, made it official yet, but I, I'd like to host like the SIGGRAPH uh, lender spotlight session, you know, where people can kind of like what, what was like the community showcase. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So at March 1, as the SIGGRAPH uh, procedure starts uh, opening up, so for March 1, you can submit uh, proposals. But I will what? contact you in email. Well, let, let's just say that right now, since there's a lot of people watching. This is something me and, and Tom talked about last year. Uh, and you know what? We, we'd like to bring back the SIGGRAPH spotlight, and we'd like to highlight uh, if you're at SIGGRAPH and you have an amazing piece of artwork and you want to talk about it and how you did it, SIGGRAPH's the place to be, and we're going to be uh, probably towards the April time period, maybe May, we're going to help have an open website for people to submit their work, and we'll pick the best of the best, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, I think we got one more question uh, in here, and... How do we make money? Ah. Oh, the, the, that's the big one. <laughs> Two messages up. Cloud. That's how, how we, we make, make money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, we also are on the MBA on for one project. Not really MBA, but uh, it's nicer to have a surprise, right? So we do open business. I know it's fun. You work on something, and while you work on it, you can answer. Uh, well, currently, we have two projects running, and these will both be surprises. But they're not long-term awesome. projects. It's just a uh, couple of weeks and one is two months, maybe one and a half months. And then we show it and then everybody's like, ah, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool stuff. A lot of things we, we do, and that's what in negotiation, but I would like to uh, connect a lot with studio with uh, vendors of equipment. For example, talk to people who make VR glasses or people who make 8K screens, that kind of things to make a special version of our open movies. That is what we've been doing in the past a lot, and that's still going on. There are 8K TV in 120 frames per second, and we need content for that. And I said, well, of course, uh, we, we have a uh, glass half, and, uh, porno, or we have another film, but then uh, we can render that in 8K, or we can render that in high frame rate. And that's where we got a little budget for, and that's how we can survive. An improved blender. An improved, An improved blender, of yeah, course. improved blender. Because it's fixed. But what we don't do consultancy, really. No, yeah. yeah. No. If it's needed, if, it, if you can help somebody. If you email me, you got three consultants all the time. So uh, I don't the other make ones a are... business out of that because they're not too, yeah. too guilty. And, uh, we're, we're terribly expensive as consultants, yeah. <laughs> Benchmarking, okay. I, I can, like artistic, right? Ha -ha. Okay. Um, awesome. I, I was going to mention that later on we'll have uh, Hjalti yeah. also. Yeah. In uh, like seven uh, hours from yeah. now? So the next session? Yeah, Five, for, for our next Q&A session, it would be really great if you include uh, your uh, animation questions. Because that's uh, he's really the expert at it, anything regarding animation. So um, yeah, keep in the questions posted. Yeah, in six hours from now, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About six hours. No Blender talk. Um, we'll send it right away. I can do email. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I got a, I got a small question for you. I think you kind of answered it. How many emails and tweets do you get like a day? How, how many do you get? How people? many emails and tweets do you get per day? Sent about 30 to 50 per day. Sent. Sent. How many I get? Well, um, 
five times more on. So, but I don't read all of them, I can't. Right? But my average day is 20, 30, uh, not that. It's horrible, but uh, I connect so many people that way. It's important to do this. But then I can't code. Yeah. Somebody has to do this. Yeah. Cool. Well, How many did you do that? Uh, <laughs> not as many. Uh, I, I'd say I'd, I think I send about ten or fifteen a day at the most, but not not as many. Okay. It's a, a full time job sometimes, right? It's a full time job chasing clients to pay you back for the work that you've done. But, but I still like it. I know it's sometimes a waste, but everybody who writes to Foundation at London uh, yeah. use the question. Everybody gets replied. I want to put everybody in advice. It feels like uh, if you want to have that close connection. Even though I can't help everybody, I, po I point them at the place where they can get help. But it's important to be accessible to uh, the outside. Absolutely. And now it's 12. We have to go. Thanks. Yeah, and now it's 12. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. It was awesome. Yes. Uh, and we will. And yeah, everybody, thank you very much. I, I mean, I can't, I can kind of clap. Uh, hopefully. There we go. Yeah, you kind of get the idea. Um, just a little bit of, what's that? Where are we going next? Yeah. Okay. Where, where are we going next? Um, well, we, we, are, we have two things that are coming up. Um, first of all, Paris, unfortunately, had it canceled, but we do have a video from Quarnot Computing. Uh, which is out of France. I believe they. I believe you guys used them for rendering at one point. They render right? Cosmos Lotromat. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So we have a, a short video by them that I'm going to be playing here, uh, and afterwards you can see some of the people already lined up, uh, staring at us from Dublin. This is Dublin. the first, the Ooh. first user group meeting for the Dublin Blender. Yeah. Interesting. So, so I don't know if they can hear us or anything, but uh, we, we can certainly can hear see us them. wave. Uh, hey, oh, hey, nice. Nice. Hey. nice. Cool. What's that? Havoc, the physics game manager. Oh, yes. What? Yes, it does. That's Yeah. So, see you guys, and see you're back at Bye. in six hours. Six hours. All right, you guys. Have a good one. Thanks for joining us. My question will be for that later. Yeah.